Hi. Is this Shane Barbie? Who's this? This is Big Fur Hat. How are you? Alright, I'm calling you just as an animal lover to animal lover. I'm calling you for a statement on what we can all do at the final hour for Lennox, because I know that you're passionate about that, and I'd, I'd like for our listeners to hear it from your own voice. As an animal activist, um, thank you so much for supporting. Um, there are more dog and cat lovers and, and owners than there are parents, and as we learn from Michael Vick, we love our animals. Um, you know, Geraldo even said that he was better off being a child molester, not that I condone that, than an animal abuser. So we don't put up with this. But I think this message with Lennox is such a huge message that can spread to all areas. It is a message, not only as an animal activist, because animal activists are thought as, you know, people haters, but it's actually a message to go beyond our own arrogance like Matthew Scully says in the Dominion, that, that, that creatures are here for us to, um, to look after, to care for, not to exploit. And I thought that was so fiercely, nicely said. And I think we can be bipartisan about this message and say as long as we can go beyond our own sex, race, religion to learn to be more compassionate and understand towards our own selves, then we can learn to not be prejudiced. And this whole message with Lennox is this sweet dog, just sweet, that wasn't even a pit bull. Not that pit bulls are bad, it's just a breed um, that gives a clue to what they do. But as Susan Milan, the dog trainer, says, you go by the species, which is a herd animal. Dogs are what the owners tell them to be. They live to please the owner. That... <clears throat> that we shouldn't judge a dog or anything by the way they look. We should judge it by what they are. And they are the most, you know, they are one of the sweetest creatures on this planet. For God's sake, they're a companion animal. And uh, they're here because of us, and we have an obligation. We don't eradicate humans for overpopulation or because of you know, race, religion, and I certainly don't think we should give that message to kids or other people with animals and think of them as less than. Just let's include them as a part of the equation in life. We have uh, a couple of hours before uh, the fate of Lennox is decided for good. Um, I, I guess all I wanted to do is uh, have people listen to your voice. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you for supporting I thank everybody for supporting. It's been a two-year battle. And um, I know the owners, you know, are, I don't want to get too much into it, but, you know, one of the owners is, I mean, one of the family members are disabled and are so attached. This is a family member. And I, I saw that in Katrina Rescue. I thought that people were not allowed to bring their animals. And I, this one man had a heart attack because it was a family member. So even even if you think it's not that people love their animals that much, we need to respect that love because that attachment is, you know, you see it in post-traumatic syndrome with even soldiers. That pet therapy is so wonderful and something that we can learn from, the unconditional love. But I love how the world came together for this little dog, meaning it's not just one little dog, it's it's a dog that everybody, it matters to everybody. And we can't save all the dogs in all the world, but we sure can make that world for that one little dog. Mm. Shane, uh, have you ever seen the Twilight Zone episode of the, uh, the old farmer who was out hunting coons with his dog, and the dog jumped under the water, and he went in to save the dog? He passed away, both the dog and he passed away, and it was time to move on to heaven. And he, he's walking this road, and he comes upon the pearly gates, and the man says that he can't go in with the dog. The dog's not allowed in heaven. So he, choos yeah. he chooses to walk the road longer, and he comes across another set of pearly gates. And it turns out that that really is St. Peter, and he says, no, no, the guy down the road, he was tempting you into hell. And he allows uh, the dog, he says, of course dogs are are part of heaven, they're part of our family, they're part of our... And there's different versions of that, you know, 
listen to that story. I love that story. It, it really is, I think, again, a message of all. And, and, you know, Gandhi says you can judge a country by the way it treats its animals. And I, I think that's so true. I mean, I, it's, that's not, that's a really good philosophy to live. It's not a hippie, you know, stupid statement. It is a statement to show that compassion has no boundaries. It should, you know, it shouldn't stop and start with our arrogance. I mean, for people that believe in anything, people should be more more, more open-minded to other people's opinions, and then maybe we get along. And, you know, if people can even agree to disagree, but for God's sake, if something has feelings, and it's fine, and can and can feel what we feel, and we know dogs can, then they do make, then they then they should make a difference. And thank you, thank you, everybody, for your support for Lennon. Thank you very much, and I'm going to get this out as soon as possible, because maybe we can make a difference. Right, thank you so much. All right, bye. Bye.